Daddy was driving me back to college. I'm not sure what we were talking about. I was probably telling him something I'd learned in my African-American studies classes. Wait, so if you're Gullah, that means I'm Gullah too. He looked at me incredulously. Well, yeah. How did you miss that? I remember the first time I really thought I was missing something. African dance class my freshman year. The teacher always asked these two girls to show the rest of us how it should be done. The movements in the knees, not the hips, she'd say. It's my Jamaican roots, one of the girls said. That's probably why I can pick up the steps so fast. How did I miss it? My parents toured the country, telling stories and singing songs of the people my daddy knew from Cedar Grove and the Sea Islands where he'd grown up. My mom remembers being on stage and catching me out of the corner of her eye in a car seat behind the curtain, clapping my hands and singing along to some distant memories of drum beats. I harmonized the Negro spirituals and clap and stomp out their rhythms. My family danced around with a bright yellow polywog on Nick Jr.'s Gullah Gullah Island. That was my parents' show. But there was them, and then there was me. You know, them Geechee people from across the bridge. Them one who talk fast, like Jamaicans. Gullah was something I smelled, tasted, heard, and felt. Shrimp and grits collard greens, fried fish, hoppin' johns, rice for days. The scent of the saltwater marsh, ducking my head under Spanish moss to avoid red bugs, sitting up under my grandmother. We'd sing whatever song she liked, and I'd listen to her stories. Jesus, the light of But Gullah seemed to belong to someone else. Maybe I was telling my dad about Denmark Vesey's slave rebellion and the wisdom of Septima Clark, both Gullah, when it finally hit me. When I recognized myself with the blood of a mighty people running through my veins. Jesus, the light of the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs>